LPG is a clean fuel made up of mostly propane and butane. These gases occur as vapors in nature. The ideal gas equation we learnt in school could not have greater practical application than on gas tankers. PV is equal to NRT, P being the pressure and T the temperature. Simply put, as the temperature rises, the pressure rises. On reaching its boiling point, LPG expands 270 times its volume from liquid to gas. The boiling point of propane is minus 42 degrees centigrade. The boiling point of butane is minus 1 degree centigrade. These gases are highly flammable and therefore special equipment on special ships is required for their carriage at sub-zero temperatures. Roughly, half the LPG consumption in India is at the household level as cooking gas. The challenge on the gas tanker is to keep the cargo in liquid form during the course of carriage and for this, the vessel and its equipment need to be running smoothly, some of which we will explore here. Once the vessel arrives at the yard, it waits outside in the holding anchorage. The ship staff prepares the vessel for the docking and the personnel from the yard board the vessel to see and understand the jobs to be carried out during docking. Notes are exchanged from the ship staff to the yard, that is to say, from the operators to the ship repairers. This ensures a seamless takeover of the vessel for the next few weeks while she's repaired for the next three years of operation. Once the repair specifications are ironed out, the vessel enters the yard. The vessel was taken to the floating dock where she was removed from the water The floating dock was raised to lift the vessel out of the water, exposing her hull for inspection and the propeller prepared to be removed from the tail shaft. Here, the scaffolding is being raised to access the propeller. The anchors are lowered to the dock to empty the chain lockers for cleaning, inspection and repairs. In the meanwhile, the hull was high pressure washed and some part blasted and painted to save time in the dry dock. The name of the vessel was embossed on the hull. The vessel was floated out of the floating dock without her own power and entered the dry dock. The vessel continued her repairs in the dry dock to make the most efficient use of time in the yard. Blasting of the hull is continued on the ship side and below the hull for the preparation of application of silicon paint. While this is being carried out below in the dock, on deck the steel repairs continue. The void space is the space between the hull and the cargo tank. While the vessel is in dry dock, this is the only time the vessel is free of charter and not carrying cargo. At this time, the void spaces which are inerted during normal operation are accessible and gas-free for inspection by classification societies and the vessel superintendent. The cargo tank is supported by chocks on the bottom and on the sides to keep it in place as the ship rolls and pitches at sea. What we see here is the hull on the left and the cargo tank on the right. The cargo tank bears the stresses of the cargo caused by temperature and pressure, while the hull bears the stresses of the vessel, caused by external forces, keeping them independent of each other. 
The cargo tank, which is made of special low temperature steel to withstand the low carriage temperature of the cargo, is also inspected along with the cargo pumps, piping and structure. This opportunity is taken to remove some of the eight cargo pumps from the bottom of the four cargo tanks to the cryogenic workshop for overhaul. In the cryogenic workshop, the pressure relief valves on the cargo tank and the cargo lines are removed and tested. The cargo tank relief valves are taken apart, overhauled and pressure tested to ensure proper functioning at the right pressure. The pump is taken apart and all the critical parts examined and renewed as required. The genius of the cargo pump is that all its parts are in a compact case which is at the bottom of the cargo tank and runs on electricity while being submerged in liquefied LPG during the entire carriage and discharge of cargo. The pumps work as intended for up to three years under these freezing sub-zero conditions with no manual intervention till it is sighted again in the next dry dock. The cargo enters the bottom of the pump and runs around the casing past the electrical connections and the ball bearings, cooling and lubricating them as it passes through. Meanwhile, in the dry dock, the final coat of silicon paint is being applied to the hull to preserve it from barnacles and algae and to preserve the vessel's speed and fuel consumption over the next few years. After 40 days of repairs and maintenance, the vessel is now ready to face the challenges of the gas trade. The vessel sails out, ready in every respect to condition her tanks for her low temperature cargo and subsequent loading, while continuing her mission of supplying clean, cheap fuel to every household in the nation.